Hey, hey everybody, welcome to another vlog review. This is a fusion, uh, this is called The Revisiting, the going back. Um, what I'm gonna try and do as time goes on is to go back to some of my older reviews <clears throat> and like a few months down the line, uh, basically just come back over and give them like a final thoughts, feelings, because uh, sometimes you can get stuff, be really excited about it, and then a few months down the line, it's fizzled out, and there may be a reason why. So, um, but not always. Sometimes you might come back and say, hey, this is still fantastic, I love it. So today, we are gonna be doing this with the Providence playing cards. Um, I gave these an okay review. I felt they were really nice decks of cards. Um, you know, the layout, the look of them is really nice. I have to admit, I do like the, um, the overall design, the theme, the arcing. Uh, I even have a, a spare, this is my spare deck, by the way. This is where I keep extra cards. Um, usually when I buy a deck of cards, I usually buy several decks, which I would recommend you do to get the best value from these as well. Little little thing there for you. And I have a deck here of, um, I think these were used a few times, and now these are like spare cards. Um, just sometimes as magicians, we need a duplicate card. I can grab one from here and I'm good to go. Uh, my current deck, which is just over here. Uh, again, this gives me a chance to show the very nice side opening which is kind of cool most decks open from the top this opens from the side though if you're putting cards back into the box uh, with this design it's a little bit more awkward can be done but that and i actually have my deck of, this is my daily runner this is the deck i use all the time uh, not all the time i usually use steve dellers as well but uh, if i'm using just normal cards these um these are in a uh, size seven stack which i use and there's one thing i I was, wanted to show this to people, and I never had a chance as well. By the way, there's the very nice, which is what I like about these, the nice dark design. I kind of like it. For me, it suits um, the mentalist a little bit better, I feel, because it's a darker, more mysterious design, but uh, it's the set of playing cards. I do one thing with my cards, and that's something called the thick card. Uh, there's, I think Liam, Montem Liam Montemer has got a whole slew on this. It's something I've used for ages, and I've gone back to using it again, even in mentalism. Uh, and it's a thick card, uh, which is basically a card that is twice as thick as the other cards. So it's, um, as you can see there, I'm trying to push down on the card, you can see it's much thicker. Makes it easier to find and cut to. Uh, so that means that I always know that this top card will be the Seven of Diamonds. So even though I'm in style Stebbins, this just allows me to do a full cut and I can cut the cards. And at any time I can just riffle up the back, find the cards, cut them back, and my Seven of Diamonds will be back there. The thick card's very useful. Um, I just use it as a sort of a get out of get out of jail card basically which i've also done with this deck here i took an old, an old one of these old cards glued two of them together with a prick stick and that's how you do it it's not difficult it's been covered in many it's not a new concept some people have done some work on it which is always nice uh, but by having a fit card in my deck even if these get shuffled up and it becomes a normal deck no longer in size seven stack uh, it's the one card that I can always get in position because it's so easy to find and it looks fine. The only downside is, is if you do riffle shuffles, people will spot it straight away, but I don't do that style. Most of my stuff is usually cutting of cards or uh, force cuts of cards as well. It's one of my favorite. As I'm talking, I will do a force cut and I'm back to how I was. And there you go. So yeah, and then I can just recut the cards and then my seven is back. Yeah, I did that force cut wrong. So you do that, do that, do that, do that, do that do that and then that's my false cut and yeah there we go my seven of diamonds so in handling uh they're really nice uh i do feel like the quality of them is good uh they seem to last a bit longer than bikes to be honest with you i have actually found that uh, longevity on these cards is really really quite good so in a kind of way by beating around the bush and saying this Buying slightly better cards now means that you won't go through as many cards so therefore instead of buying for the price of two bikes you can use one providence or expensive deck as well so perhaps in the old mentalist on the shoestring thing is sometimes quality can be key but at the same time you want value for money but i think if you do that with these decks of cards or any good deck of cards not just the providence but you get a good set they will last you longer uh they are much thicker you know they're very well made there's a bit of, you know a bit of stiffness to them they still work well and still work great for any of your double lifts or anything at all i'm just going to cut that deck put that out of there so i can now try and double lift the card yeah i can double lift it and you know bring it back so yeah my double lift absolutely sucks i'm still trying to work on the uh the strike double at the moment so uh, one of the things i am doing with cards is i'm slowly going back to using cards again um mainly because i think they can work well in mentalism but i think a lot of it will design on how you perceive that so the providence cards at 10 pound a deck initially i was a bit like yeah they're a bit expensive 
I mean, the trouble is now everything's gone up in price. I think now for £10 a deck, I think now they are, to me, um, well worth it. I have found these to be really nice. They look good. They look the part. Sometimes I think the 1940 may do a deal on these, but if you buy in bulk, you can get the price down from £10 a deck to a little bit less. Uh, so if you buy like a bricks worth, which most mentalists and magicians are going to do anyway, do recommend these. And so, yeah, so my stance on those has actually changed. Um, initially, I was like, yeah, they're good, but expensive. Um, I think now they are well worth the money in terms of longevity. I mean, this was one of my first decks, uh, even though it's become the spares deck, hence the spares. They still look really good. You know, they are still nice, good quality. They seem to take a good pounding as well in terms of usage. I know this deck here has been absolutely flummoxed, yet it's still nice and white. Um, the only reason I changed it, I think I just got bored with doing these, but this is the spare deck. So again, I can still use this for standard shuffles as well. Um, but I will take cards from this if I need to Mercury card fold or play around or get duplicates, stuff like that as well. So yeah, the only thing I would like to see though, as an additional to this one before we wrap it all up, is I would love to see the 1914 do a, uh, a gaff deck of these, uh, like double faces, double blankers, you know, not every gaff out there known to mankind, but at least double backers, double faces, mispipped, and maybe some of the, the standard gaffs and, you know, split, you know the, the cards that you often find in a gaff deck because there are some cards that can help you as well, especially things like double backers are very handy. Double faces can be very useful. So I would like to see the 1914 uh, get these in a gaff version or at least, you know, um, the basic gaffs. Not every single gaff under the sun, of course, but, you know, your double faces, double blankers, all that lovely stuff, guys. That would be great. But no, I'm really enjoying these. Um, Next time I buy some cards, I will be buying these, the Providence ones, because they suit me very well. Uh, obviously, I still use my Steve Della marked cards uh, because they are marked, so they're very handy for general magic as well. But I just like to look at these. You know, to, the, to me, these, these sort of like, sort of, they have that mentalist vibe in the design. I think that's what it is. So, yeah, for those, you'll probably get away with using your mentalism without too much fuss. But uh, anyway, it's down to how you act and do it, of course. So then, guys, I've been blabbering on for a little bit just to do an overcap. I will catch you all on the next video. So until then, have fun, goodbye, and I'll see you later. Bye.